in a bit of, I guess, surprising news, we had LSU and Ed Ogeron uh, agree to to basically end his time at LSU. I know he's going to coach out the remainder of the year. And I don't think that it's a surprise that Orgeron, in essence, got fired. But I do think it's a bit of a surprise that it's happening now. After this loss, he thought maybe at the end of the year, I'm surprised they're letting him coach the rest of the year because we've seen with Ed Orgeron, and he's finishing out a year, they reel off some success, and it's like, are we really going to fire this guy? But regardless, LSU's going to have a head coaching opening. And I don't care what you say, LSU is one of the premier jobs in college football. Not only is it in the SEC, but it's in a completely talent-rich state. You know, the, the state of Louisiana is a hotbed for uh, college football prospects. And they, for the longest of time, has dominated um, recruiting that state. You got Texas real close by. You got, you know, other states in the south. I mean, you can pull kids from anywhere to LSU. And so this is a premier job. I think this is a top five job in college football. They always have talent, They always, but they just can't put it together. So I think if, you know, when you do get good coaching, they've won national championships. And so it'll be fascinate, fascinating to see who they end up hiring. Now, their new, their new AD is a guy who's gone out and he's hired some big names. He was at Washington when he got Chris Peterson to leave Boise State. He was at Texas A&M when they got Jimbo Fisher to leave Florida State. So when you look at who LSU can hire, they're not not—they're thinking big. And they're going to go after some big names. I don't know if they're going to get them. But they're going to go after some big names. And two of the names that you're hearing are Jimbo Fisher and Dabo Sweeney. Now, I don't think either of those two guys will leave. I wouldn't be shocked if Jimbo did. I don't think he will. But I think it's a possibility. And you can't just brush it off saying, why would Jimbo Fisher leave Texas A&M? for LSU. Well, he's coached there before. You know, as good a Texas, as Texas A&M is and the resources that they have and they're in the state of Texas, LSU is a different animal. Like I said, I don't think they're going to go. I don't think Dabo's going to leave Clemson. He's in too good of a situation there. They just need to fix a few things and I think he'll be fine. So, so who does LSU go to? Who could they get if they strike out at Jimbo, they strike out at Dabo? And I think a couple names to kind of keep an eye on. I think one name to kind of keep an eye on, and I think this might be a fallback candidate, and that is Billy Napier from Louisiana Lafayette. I think he's a guy that's going to be an SEC coach at some point. I just don't know if, if Ellis used the job for him because, like I said, this is a top five job, and he's done marvelous things at Louisiana Lafayette, and he looks primed to be an SEC coach at some point. I just, like I said, don't know if LSU is that job. I think if he ends up getting it, it's because they've struck out on a few people and he's kind of their fallback. And that's not a slight at, at Napier. Like I said, I think he's going to be a good coach. I just don't know if this is the job for him. So if we look at who their candidates are, I think there are um, three-ish guys that I think they should target. And if they got any of these three, they're gonna, I think it's, it's going to be considered a win. First one is Mario Cristobal from Oregon. I think every big job that's open, his name's getting brought up because he's, he's a good coach. He's at Oregon. He's having success. He's he's re, you know he's recruiting Oregon and he's treating Oregon like an SEC school. And they haven't had the success. They haven't made a college football playoff. I mean, they have one loss this year. Who knows? They can make it. But he's recruiting them at a high level. He's from Florida, from the Miami area. He's coached at Alabama. He's coached at some big time programs in the South. I think he's a guy that if you put him on LSU. He's going to, you know, not, you, you don't even have to try hard to get good recruits to LSU. And then you bring in a stud recruiter, a guy that's built a program up, elevated a program that was already pretty good. I think that's a, a good step forward. And I think he's got to be one of the top candidates for this job. Um, who knows if he wants to leave Oregon. He's the, the USC job is going to be open, is open, that he could pot, potentially go to. He's got, uh, you know, Miami could open. I don't know if Miami's going to be able to pay his buyout. But... Uh, he's got some options there. Another candidate is uh, Mark Stoops at, at Kentucky. And Kentucky just beat LSU. They, they're having a good, you know, they're a 11th ranked team in the nation before they lost to to uh, to Georgia. But they 
he, he's he's building that program up, and he looks like he's going to be a guy that um, could have a lot of success. You know, he's coached at Florida, he's coached at Arizona, he's coached at Oklahoma. Um, I personally think he should stay at Kentucky just because I think that is the the best fit for him with his Ohio roots and and recruiting those those players to Kentucky. Um, you know, I think he'd do well at at LSU. I just you know once again. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be their top choice, and if he's not their top choice, um, you know, someone else might take that job, and he might also, like I said, I think he's just a better fit at Kentucky, and I think he can have a lot more success there, and sometimes you, you stay in your comfort zone, and you have that success. Um, another name that's getting a lot of buzz out there is Lane Kiffin. Uh, Lane Kiffin, you know, I don't think he's going to retire, and, and I don't think Ellis, you know, Ole Miss is going to be the job that he sticks with for years and years to come. I think he's gonna uh, at some point get uh, bump himself up to that next level. And I think LSU is a possibility. You know, they know that, hey, when we had an innovative offensive mind in Joe Brady, uh, that's when they had the most success and record-breaking season. And Lane Kiffin hasn't won big at Ole Miss yet, but he's building that program up and he's winning consistently. And I think he, he's definitely a strong candidate for this job and a, a strong, you know, I think he'd do well. Um, I mentioned Joe Brady, uh, and I guess I'll talk about him. I don't think he's going to take this job. Joe Brady, former offensive coordinator there, now the offensive coordinator with the Carolina Panthers. Joe Brady's going to be an NFL coach. He seems to be want to be in the NFL, so I think they're going to make that call, and they should. But at this point, I don't, I don't see him coming. All right, the last coach I'm going to talk about, and, and this is the guy who I think is going to end up being the next LSU head coach, and that is Michigan State's Mel Tucker. And this is tough because Mel Tucker has only been at Michigan State for two years, but if you see what he's doing with the Spartans, um, it, it's, it's remarkable. And he's really built them up in a short period of time, you know, hit that transfer portal hard. Uh, and, and I think he's a guy, you know, Bruce Feldman from Fox Sports and The Athletic, um, has reported that there's a lot of people in the SEC and especially LSU that, that like Mel Tucker. Uh, Mel Tucker's coached at LSU before. He's been the defensive coordinator at Georgia. He's coached at Alabama. He's been a defensive coordinator in the NFL. He's been a head coach for at least three years, one year at Colorado, leaving there after a year. Now this is his second year at Michigan State. He has him ranked in the top 10. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit biased. I wasn't very impressed with him as a defensive coordinator when he was the Chicago Bears. But since he's left there, his stints at Georgia, Alabama, Michigan State, he's proven that he's a high-level coach. He, you know, his mantra in building his program is he wants size. He, you know, he's like, you can't have success if you don't have big athletes. And that's what he's recruited at Colorado. That's what he's recruited and, and got from uh, the transfer portal at Michigan State. And he's having success. Now you put him in LSU where you can, you're, you're right around a lot of talent. You know, he knows the South. He's coached in the SEC, he understands that. I'm a big believer in, I don't think it's an end all be all, but you get coaches to coach where they're comfortable. You know, guys that are from the South, who've coached in the South, who had success, they're gonna do well. Guys in the Midwest, guys in the West Coast, whatever it may be. I think Mel Tucker, he might not be the sexiest name, he might not be Jimbo Fisher name, he might not be a Lane Kiffin name, uh, but I think he might be one of the better candidates for this job. I think if I was hiring, I, I would really go hard after Mario Cristobal, but I think Mel Tucker is gonna be that guy that they end up hiring, and I think I'd, if I was an LSU fan, I'd be very happy with that selection.